Hey, what's up, world? And welcome to the 36th edition of the Take One Podcast. And I'd like to thank you guys for joining me. Um, This episode, I'm going to be talking about just like a couple. I got a couple subjects. Like I said, I'm not going to make these too long, about 20 to 30 minutes long. So I'm not going to be taking up too much of your time. Uh, And I just, these two subjects is two things I actually really want to talk about. Um, One of them was just something that's pertaining toward a movie that uh i kind of re- reviewed recently and i kind of wanted to, to speak on just the aspect because it speaks on a different a whole bunch of other uh, films or whatever and just the way the industry works and but the first subject i kind of want to get into it which is the title subject which is will i about to say star wars will the avengers infinity war crack a well crack two billion dollars and i'm just I, I just thought it was curious because i never even like thought that it could possibly do it not saying that i don't think it will of course i just that thought never crossed my mind of you know could it possibly be our avatar you know could it possibly be that movie that literally beats out avatar or at least comes close to being number two out beating titanic and my answer to that is yeah i think that this movie has out of any movie that's coming out within this year well from for the rest of this year even like freaking justice league uh i think out of any movie that's coming out for the rest of this year and like even like next year Infinity War has the highest probability of basically cracking $2 billion at the most being in second place in the highest grossing movies of all time. I have, I think that this movie is going to be a contender. I've said in a recent podcast that, uh, basically, yeah, um, I forgot what number it was, uh, it's in the podcast or whatever. Uh, I had mentioned it, okay, in podcast 29, if you want to go back and listen to that. And that one was called, you know, Star Wars Episode 8 versus Avengers Infinity War, Who Wins? And I'll talk more about that, but you can go ahead and, like, uh, check that out, of course, after you listen to this. But my whole thing is that I think it really does have a chance of doing it. Now, Avengers Infinity War is, to my knowledge, well, I ain't going to say to my knowledge, but it's an event movie. That's how I view it. It's an event movie. It's like everything culminating up to that point. It's like a Super Bowl or a World Series or the Stanley Cup or Oscars. Uh, I mean, I don't know if the Oscars would be a thing, but everything is kind of boiling up to that, you know, who wins. Uh, it's kind of like a, like for the wrestling fans, a WrestleMania or whatever you want to put it. Um, it's like that's basically what it is. Everything accumulating up to that point is basically even what Fe- um, Kevin Feige has said. You have about a thousand movies <laughs> leading up to a movie that has a thousand characters up in it. Of course, I'm over exaggerating, but in the same sense, it is a freaking episodic i ain't gonna say episodic movie that's not a way to freaking call it but it's in it's an epic event an epic event it is an event movie you have this is going to be a movie that is just as big or not i ain't gonna say just as big but bigger than the avengers i think this movie is going to outbeat the avengers no doubt about it no doubt about it Now, of course, like, I mean, with anything, I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong. We could go see this movie next year and we leave out the theater like, that movie could have been so much better. It was okay. And that's something that I fear because looking at, like, I I mean, I was one of those people. I didn't go to Comic-Con. I'm not, like, rich. I don't have money coming out the ass, but it's like... I'm one of those people that did see the Infinity War trailer online. Only reason I didn't speak on it 
on the podcast is because I wasn't doing a podcast around that time. And even if I did, uh, I think I did have a podcast. It was going to be episode 29. Uh, it was going to be out around the time Comic-Con came out. And I was going to speak on that. But I felt like, why would I do a review on a like trailer that I barely saw? You know, that was at a funky angle, uh, wasn't HD, it's from somebody's camera phone that they snuck in and all this stuff. You get everybody, ah, you know, popping for, you know, Spider-Man and Thanos and stuff like that and Thor meeting the Guardians. I mean, don't get me wrong. It, I, I seen the clear version of it. It's, I mean, not super clear, but, you know, clear enough to where you can make out a lot of the things that happen in there. Um, but, you know, it, it wasn't like full HD. And so I'm just like, I'm not about to do a review on it. Now, when they finally drop an actual HD trailer on YouTube and stuff, then I will give my thoughts on it. But even just seeing that trailer from what I can make out and get from it and just all the stuff that I know, this is one of those movies where it is huge. I mentioned that this movie has the biggest all-star cast and i'm surprised that no one that no one is talking about that i mean a lot of these stars of course aren't like breakout actors like it ain't like every single one of these actors have like 10 or more films that's like critically acclaimed and all this stuff and you know they have you know it's just but when you look at it these are all names that when you watch these movies you know you know a Robert uh, Downey Jr. You know an Anthony Mackie. You know a Chadwick Boseman. You know a Tom Holland now. Uh, uh, you freaking know a Scarlett Johansson. You know Mark Ruffalo. You know Chris Pratt and Chris Hemsworth. You know all these people. And it's way more. Way more. You know? And all of these characters are going to be in one movie. In one freaking movie. This movie, I would have no problem. More than likely, it's going to be like maybe two and a half hours long. I would have no problem. This movie is like clocking in at three hours or just a little bit over three hours. I would not. I would not. I would be like, yo, okay, cool. <laughs> you know, especially if it's good. Because one of the things that um, what I did like about the uh uh russo brothers and what they did i mean of course i love what they did with um captain america winter soldier and i love what they did with civil war now I, I know a lot of people didn't like civil war but i know a majority of the people did love civil war i'm being one of them uh one of the things i did like about it is that i always tell this to people i believe i mentioned it before but it's like when a movie is good and let's say you have a good movie and a bad movie. Both movies are two and a half hours long or close to it. Basically, case in point, I'll put in last year. Last year, we had Captain America Civil War and we had Batman v Superman. Batman v Superman clocked in, I think, a little bit over an hour and a half. I think it was like an hour 31. I think it was something like that. Uh, and then Captain America Civil War was... an like 220 something 227 or something like that but it was close to basically hour and a half so basically these movies clocked in at an hour and like not gonna say hour and a half two hours and a half two and a half hours both of these movies the thing is is when you make a great film that's long that's say two and a half hours long or three hours you don't feel the length you don't you go into that movie, if you're entertained throughout the whole thing and it captures your, your 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 imagination or whatever, if you're involved in this movie and you are just enjoying the hell out of it, you don't feel the length. It feels like just a regular movie. But if a movie is bad or it's just not a good movie, I ain't gonna say bad, but just not a good movie, you're going to feel the length. You're going to feel it. You're gonna be like, damn. When is this movie over? You're going to be looking at your clock like, uh, dang, man. So we got like another 40 minutes, you know, you're going to be like that. And the reason I bring up Captain America Civil War and Batman v Superman, because I didn't feel that way with um, Captain America Civil War. I didn't feel the length. 
BVS, I felt the length. I think majority of it was due to the fact that I drunk a lot of pop and I needed to piss. And I didn't want to leave my seat and go to the bathroom and miss anything with the movie. Even though at that point I was still kind of disappointed with the movie. But I didn't want to miss anything. So I had to hold my piss. And I was just like, damn, come on, let this movie be over so I go pee. But it's still in the same sense. I still felt the length. Uh, Captain America Civil War. I literally, and, and no joke, no, li like, no, no joke at all. I literally, I literally found out that that movie was close to two and a half hours after I saw the movie. And I was shocked. I think I was at work and I looked it up because I was curious. Because I think I was talking with a co-worker and I was like, man, how long is that movie? So I looked it up and I'm like, damn, this movie was like almost basically two and a half hours. And I was shocked. I was in utter shock because I didn't feel the length. It felt like basically a two hour movie or a little bit under a two hour movie. That's how I felt. Because I was entertained throughout the whole film. From the action to the dialogue, everything, the story, whatever. I was entertained throughout the whole thing. And I know I'm getting off track, but I'm just trying to make my point. Just trying to make my point. Uh, but yeah, I mean, and then, you know, like I said, you feel, when you feel the length, it, you know it's not a good movie because you're focused on that. But if it's a good movie, you're not focused on it. And one of the movies that... I've heard that you don't really feel the length because it's so good as Wolf of Wall Street. I haven't seen it yet. I do have plans to see it, but, you know, it's whatever. But getting back to Avengers Infinity War, if it's two and a half hours or 240 or three hours long, I would not bat an eye. I would not. Like, I mean, of course, my deepest fear or my darkest fear or biggest fear, however you want to put it, would be that it's not going to be that good. And then you end up filling the length. But I think Marvel is going to play it safe. I think they're going to make it at the most two and a half hours long. I would be surprised if it's over like two and a half hours long. If it's like 240 or 250. I would be fucking hella surprised if it was that. If that was the case. But it's like, I want to see a lot of this. You have... A crazy amount of characters in there. You have characters from each Marvel film. Each MC, not I ain't gonna say each Marvel film, but each MCU film. You have all these characters in one film. That's crazy. Like just to just to think about that. It's an epic film. And when you have a lot of these elements together, you have all-star cast, the biggest all-star cast, as far as I know, in movie history. Then you have all these elements of like a do over a dozen movies that's connecting that is basically this is the end game. Of course, it's not going to end right here. Like the Marvel Universe ain't going to be done. But this is what everything has been building up to. This is the big bad of the Marvel Cinematic Universe as of right now. And... You have all these characters. It takes like basically almost 30 people, 30 characters, 30 heroes to go at one guy. Just go at one guy. More than likely you don't have like little henchmen, but to go at one guy. That's, it, it, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's something just special about that. I can, I can see that this movie is going to get pre-sales out the ass and i am going to be i'm definitely going to be one i'm more than likely am going to a fancy theater going to see that shit in imax i don't know i ain't, I'm, I'm, I ain't gonna see it in 3d i don't know like i don't really see imax films too much so i don't know if they have just a regular imax film uh you know regular imax screen or if it has to be in 3d but if it's just imax screening or you know if just an imax screening then i'm going to go see that because that is going to be something truly special. If I can get an early screen into it, I'm most definitely going to it. And if it's good, I'm most definitely going to go see it again. And I'm more than likely going to go see it again if it's that damn good. Because this movie, I cannot wait to see. So, yeah. 
my whole thing it is going to crack. I believe in my soul, in my bones, that it is going to crack two billion dollars. I feel like I could put money on that and be secure because ain't no other movie coming out like this unless we unless like once we get to like uh, uh episode nine we're not going to get this episode eight i mentioned in my other one it, it's like it's the in between you know episode seven we thought we wasn't going to get another star wars film we ended up getting one so that did numbers this one yeah it's, it's going to do numbers it's going to be probably in a billion dollar club and but you know it's the in between the ninth one is the last one it's that like is the end of the trilogy so that one is going to do way more numbers people are going to want to know how it ends so in any case uh <laughs> i was getting off track a little bit but yeah it's going to crack two billion dollars i can bet money on that i think i don't know if it's going to outbe avatar i hope it does i believe it will but we'll we'll see but i do think it's going to crack two billion dollars and that is my take on that shit um uh, my prediction um and so moving on to the next one i'm trying not to talk too long on this because i didn't know if i i was gonna have too much to say about this and i just went crazy so one of the things that i wanted to kind of talk about because i did um I did a lot of reviews. I've been putting out a crazy amount of reviews. As of right now, uh, I have a lot of podcasts out. Uh, I have episodes, of course, you know, since this is uh, episode 36, I have episodes 29 through 35 out on my channel as of right now. So go ahead and check that out. And that's the Take One Podcast. I have things called, you know, uh, Quick Takes. I have about, I think, four of them out by now yeah i think i have about four of them out so uh go ahead check that out and then um basically what i was getting at i'm i'm sorry i i, I always do this. i always get off track you know but getting back on track getting you know not derailed again but i did two reviews on two movies or yeah i would say i would just count those two movies and it goes along with other films but the two movies that i did um <laughs> reviews on is it comes at night and transformers the last night now those are the ones that can come to memory right now but i know it's been some before and all this has to do with false advertisement and its effect on the film and it has a very 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 heavy effect on a film I'm not going to say it's the end all and be all, but it changes your perception of what it is. Matter of fact, um, Driver is one of those films just to come to mind. Um, I'm going to come up like as I'm thinking, like I'm talking as I'm, I'm thinking as I'm talking and I'm probably going to come up with other different titles. But those are the three movies that I can come up with is It Comes at Night, Transformers 5 and then, you know, Driver. But it has a major role on it for the simple fact that a lot of times I've heard that movie movie um, companies what they would do mo what they would do is that they would shoot certain scenes while filming it just for the trailer. So as you see the trailer, I know you've come across like movies where you'll see a certain scene in the trailer that's kind of iconic. You like you know it probably might have like a little catchphrase to it or something. And then when you see the movie the scene isn't there so it's like why isn't that scene there you know they put it in the trailer but they they specifically do that for the trailer to get you in that's one of their hooks that they put out to get you in in a sense um one that i could think of is uh suicide squad now this isn't like a false advertisement thing with the movie but the whole joker scene with the I, I want to show you my toys. Like that was a scene that was, I believe, in the deleted, uh, one of the deleted scenes or whatever. But that was heavy in the trailer. It has a lot of iconic scene with uh, lines and stuff throughout the trailer. But that was one of them that you know people memorize from the trailer, you know, or you know remember from the trailer. 
And it's not in the movie. I mean, I think it's an extended edition or deleted scenes when you buy the Blu-ray or whatever, but it's not in there. And they do that specifically. And the reason I bring up movies like Driver, It Comes at Night, and uh, Transformers 5 is that they market these, of course, to get people in the uh, seats. And another movie that I can bring up, I haven't seen this movie yet. I'm still debating on whether I want to go check it out. I may check it out next week. I don't know. But the movie Mother. I'm going to throw that in there as well because I've heard that it has kind of mixed... Well, not mixed, but false advertisement in it as well from the trailers. But, uh, so, yeah. So, it comes at night. Not to give away too much of it. I'm not going to really give away spoilers. Yeah, yeah I'm not going to give away spoilers. I'm going to try and keep the spoilers. I'm going to try and keep the spoiler free. Um, I do have a review out for both of these films for It Comes at Night and uh, Transformers 5, if I hadn't mentioned that before, which I think I did. But these movies, when you look at the trailer, the trailer for It Comes at Night more so is misleading. And it had an effect on the movie because when you go into it, when you look at the trailer, the trailer is like of a horror film. You think you, you, you're you going to deal with some type of monster, some type of infection, zombies. I mean, you, you are dealing with an infection in the movie. But you're thinking that you're going to be dealing with zombies and stuff. It's going to be like a 28 days later type of scenario or something of that nature. And you're thinking that, like, okay, I want to see what it is. You know, it comes at night. So what the heck is it? You know, you, you're going to the movies to go see that. And then from the trailers, you see, like, all this stuff, and it just seems like it's a mystery and all that. Do you go see the movie? And I, I want to tell you that I luckily I saw a review, I believe, before I saw it, and I was warned. Or was it? It was just not a review. I forget. I saw something or read something that basically says that this movie isn't what uh, what the trailers make it out to be. And and seeing the movie, it isn't. Matter of fact, yeah, I've heard somebody talk on it uh, on a YouTube channel uh, on Collider Talk, and they mentioned that briefly. Said that the trailers mi are misleading. The title is misleading, and blah blah. So I see what they're talking about, and that's one of the movies that I wanted to point out is that that movie isn't what the commercial or the trailer makes it out to be, and the reason for that was to get people in seats. So throw out that hook. People like all of us are suckers for a good looking horror film. You throw some stuff in there, you make it seem like something's about to happen, something's out there, or something's about to attack somebody, or blah blah blah, and you make it look good. We're gonna go spend our money and going to see this movie. It's like I said in my review, it's more of a character piece. It's more of a character piece. It's not anything. You don't see any real. You really don't see. Matter of fact. You don't see any type of like. Infected person. That like is trying to kill somebody. You don't see that. And I don't know if you could take that as a spoiler. But it's like. You don't find out what it is. And that's just really a misleading title. Because it's not it. Now I explain what I. You know what. I think it is, which is something I heard from somebody. And it's like, you know, it makes sense. So I can kind of go with that. And I say that all that in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the spoiler cast that I have of it. But yeah, and then also Transformers The Last Night is one of those that fall under false advertising. Because as you're watching it, the whole commercial or the whole trailer is Optimus Prime turns evil, this and that, blah, blah, blah. He fights Bumblebee and he's about to kill him. But when you see the movie, and this, you might take this as a spoiler. You might take this as a spoiler. So if you don't want to get spoiled, fast forward a little bit, you know, skip a little bit ahead. But um, yeah, when that happens, it only happens in a brief part of the movie. Throughout the movie, it's just Optimus Prime on Cybertron and he's getting basically held there until he comes back to Earth and then he turns on Bumblebee and then quickly turns back. It's like it happens for just like maybe 10, a little bit over 10 minutes out the whole two and a half hour movie. 
And it's like, yo, we then waited to come. We then paid our hard earned money. We waited for this movie to come out to see Optimus Prime do some damage to some Autobots. And this is what y'all give us, you know, just a little quick turn. And it be instantly just comes back to just a regular Transformer movie. It's, it's it's like that false advertisement. Like it sucks. It really does. Driver, it did, you know, it it affected the movie real bad because and looking at the trailers, because I didn't see this in theaters. I saw it um when it came on DVD. Uh but it I heard a lot of people got disappointed. A lot of people don't like the movie. I thought it was decent. You know, I didn't love it. Uh, I think my brother still loves the movie. There's a lot of people that do love the film. But the trailers, when you watch the trailers, it makes it seem like it's a Fast and Furious action type film. You know, you going, it's nonstop action, fighting and all that stuff. And as you watch it, it's just, it's a character piece. It really is. You have some driving scenes in there, but it's not what the trailer depicts it to be. So, it basically didn't do what it could have done or it just basically was done to make money mother from what i hear from different sources from people who actually seen the movie is that you know um the trailer makes it seem like it's a horror film and this and that but it's not i don't know for sure this is what i'm going off for other people now i may come back on the um, podcast and just you know you just be like, oh, well, it is a horror film or, you know, whatever. But I heard that it's more of an interpretation film rather than a horror film. And it's like, I feel like I, I get it. I get it from a standpoint, from a business standpoint, that you need to get butts and seats. You need to make money. You need to make this small film make a lot of money. Especially if you don't think it's going to make money, you need to find a way to get the butts in seats so people can see this. And I can see, like, maybe, you know, a lot, not a lot of people are going to like the movie Mother. From what I hear, it is a really, really metaphorical, just interpretation movie. And, and It Comes at Night is one of those interpretation movies. You know, it could be, I guess you could, when you watch it, I guess you could say it's a metaphorical type movie as well. But it's like, I think studios need to find a better way to market these movies that they put out instead of giving false advertisement to people because you're only going to make your sales go down. And these movies basically are suffering from it are suffering from it it comes at night i don't have the numbers in front of me i don't um but it comes at night more than likely did not do well of course this is an indie or you know it, it's a it's a smaller budget film of course but i don't think it did what it probably would have done because people are going into this movie thinking that it's a straight horror film i'm going to see some zombies i'm going to see this and you don't you don't see anything, you know. It's just a character piece between two families, and everything that goes on between them. Uh, and then Transformers, like I said, this is I think uh, this movie did less than the previous film, and a lot of people didn't like that. This movie, yeah, it, it, it just it did bad, and I and I believe that it was more than likely due to the fact that people was wanting to see. Um, Optimus Prime go at, you know, Bumblebee and trans, you know, tr turn on his Transformers, Autobots and stuff like that. And he doesn't really do it. You have to wait to the end of the film in order to see some type of like evidence or, you know, some type of like uh, scene with that taking place. And it doesn't happen for that long. So it's like, yo, you putting it on the posters and... <laughs> You putting it on the trailers that this is what this movie is about and it's a small portion of the film. Driver, I heard, suffer from that because people going in thinking it was a Fast and Furious movie and end up being disappointed at the what the movie really was. And it's the same, I guess it's gonna be the same with Mother. I was really intrigued on in seeing the movie because it looked like it's a horror film. It looks like kind of weird, crazy. 
So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go see this. But then I'm hearing how it's like a really metaphorical movie, and it's like kind of weird. So I'm just, I'm. That's why I'm second guessing on whether I'm gonna see it or not. And it takes, it takes a lot away from a movie. Not saying that it's gonna make the movie just completely bad where people don't want to see it and all that stuff, but. When you do that, you lose the money because people are going to go see this. Yeah, you're going to make money, you know, maybe the first uh, weekend and all that stuff. But then after that, you get word of mouth. People are going to be like, yo, don't go see this movie. Yeah, I thought this was a horror film, but it just ended up being like really anything. It doesn't show this, blah, blah, blah. blah. And so it's like you get a different interpretation of it when you go or a different movie than what the trailer promised you and so you lose a lot you have a big percentage drop off from the first weekend to the second weekend because you gave people false hope that this movie was this that it was going to be this that it was going to be action-packed it was going to be scary as hell it was going to have uh sharks with alligator teeth and tyrannosaurus rex tails or something and human feet walking around and it doesn't it, it's just a picture of it or you know you just have like a two minute scene with it and that's it you know it, you know you you lose a lot you lose money you lose people that want to go see that film you might find people that might watch it and be like yo this movie ain't what i thought it was but at the same time it's still good which ain't nothing wrong with that but it's it's like if you're going to put it out, put it out, show the real. Let people know what this movie is really about. Don't give false hope to people because you're only going to suffer. And the movies that I mentioned, they suffer for it. A lot of people didn't like it because false advertisement. And it's just, I, I get, you know, you're trying to make money, but I feel like just give out, put out the truth about these films. And then see what happens there. If you make money off of it, you make money off of it. You know, you're going to make money regardless. You know, so I guess if it worked and, you know, you got like a $5 million budget on a movie and it comes out $20 million, okay, cool. Then, you know, I could see it. But if you put a $5 million budget and the first weekend is like $9 million, it's like, so what did, what did you do that for? You know, so... That is, it, it's just, it's something that just really like bothers me because we all work hard for our money. We all work hard and you know, a lot of people aren't privileged to see movies that often. I'm privileged, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I ain't gonna say I'm privileged. I work hard so that I can see as many movies as I, as I can. It's a lot of people that I know that work around me or just are around me that don't see movies that often. There's people that sit here, I can't remember the last movie I saw. And that's even just watching it on DVD and stuff like that. You know, or people can, you know, remember the last time they went to the show. I go to the show damn near every freaking week unless there is nothing at the show that I want to see. You know, so it's like we work hard for the money. I work. I work damn hard. Two jobs. I work hard to see these movies, you know, and I want to know that I'm spending my hard earned money to see your film. And you're telling me that this movie is going to have a shark with alligator teeth, human leg, a Tyrannosaurus Rex um, tail. It's going to be action packed. It seems going to be scary. I want to know that all that in the trailer, what you're giving me is what I am to expect when seeing this movie. And if you're not giving me that, I'm going to tell my coworkers, I'm going to tell my friends, I'm going to tell my family members, anybody that's willing to listen, do not see this shit. Because this movie is not what it is. Unless you make it a great film, I'm going to be pissed off. But at the same time, if it takes away from it, I'm going to be like, do not go see that film. Do not go see it. Just keep your money and just spend it on something else. $10 to go see the film? You can go out to eat. You know, you can go to freaking Red Lobster and buy like, you know, some shrimp or something. Get like a little lunch for like less than that. Or you can just spend that money on another film. That's the thing. It's, it's just, 
I, I just don't like it when studios do that. Even though I get it. I get it. You know? The industry is strange. Or not even strange, but you're in it to make money. That's you, Money talks. That's what it is. Money talks. But, I mean, it's just hopefully a lot of things will change. And you'll just give us the trailer of what the movie actually is. Instead of what you want us to think it is. Just to get our butts in seats and get the money out of our wallet. You know? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it'll change. Maybe it won't. I don't think it will. But that was just my little rant or, you know, just my just airing out what I think about that and all that stuff. So, um, and that ends this uh, little bit of a lengthy uh, Take One podcast, episode 36. And like I said, I was going to try to keep it at like between 20 minutes and 30 minutes, but I'm going a little bit over. Um and I'm going to end it there. I'm not going to make it too, too long. So, um, just real quick, I am doing an expansion on my channel. I'm going to be doing a lot more stuff. I'm going to be putting out more videos this week. I put out a crazy crap ton of videos last week. I put out videos, um, about earlier this week as well. And go check that out. I got movie reviews, spoiler reviews. I got take one videos. I got other take one podcasts. Uh, and I'm going to be doing a whole lot more in the weeks to come. I'm going to be getting no sleep as I am right now because I'm pumping out so many videos. But I'm playing catch up. I'm playing catch up. I've been away for about five months. And yeah, this is what happens when you don't do movie reviews that you plan to do or anything that you plan to do but yeah go check all that out everything is up on my channel now it's a lot more um content to check out and it's going to be a lot more coming out this week i do plan to go see uh about three more movies this coming week which is uh kingsman friend request and lego ninjago so those reviews will be up later this week or sometime this week so expect that as well as other movie reviews and all that good stuff so um and yeah i think that's about it i will catch you guys next time on the next take one podcast peace